what's going on everyone we're out here on a small little local lake today if y'all have not seen recently i went and got my brand new bass boat went and picked it up from the factory came back to we Day marine and did a rigging video then did a boat walkthrough video so it's been really cool we've almost got the engine broken all the way in and we're out here today fishing in it for one of the first times i've actually made a cast out of this boat and we're trying to break it in a little bit better as far as fish slime goes on the carpet put us a couple in the live well just kind of break it in fish catching wise but i will let y'all know this video is sponsored by shop carl's if you use the code welcher 10 you can get ten dollars off your first order of 25 dollars or more and that's only for carl's club members so if you're not a carl's club member you can go get a free trial today and then you can get your ten dollars off the first order of 25 dollars so let's go rub some fish all over this boat catch us one or two So in my last couple of videos, I have got a ton of questions on the rods and reels I'll be using next year. I know some y'all seen them in my boat whenever I was doing my boat walkthrough video. Got a, that struck a nerve with some people and got us a lot of comments, but I will be using the 13 fishing rods and reels this coming year and for the foreseeable future. But the reel that I prefer is the Inception. That's one that I'm using today throwing this little flat sided square bill crankbait on a 6.6 to 1 gear ratio and this is a fate black seven foot cranking rod what that means is it has a moderate action and the reason for a moderate action is whenever that <clears throat> fish grabs those crank that uh, those treble hooks number one it's going to be a little bit slower action whenever you do kind of pull into the fish so it's not going to uh, be quite as stiff it's going to be a little bit more spongy a little bit more forgiving make sure those fish get those treble hooks all the way inside their mouth and then the treble hooks are such a light diameter wire that you want to make sure you don't have too much power to the rod so you actually don't want to rip those little treble hooks out and you don't want to uh, bend those little treble hooks out so that's why you want to use a moderate action rod whenever you're cranking and i'll tell you if you would have never told me how much this rod costs i'd have probably guessed this rod was like a 300 dollars rod but this is an 80 dollar rod for cranking and it's the, like it's the one that i prefer like i really really like this thing it's just got the perfect action for those smaller little crankbaits this is not a rod you would throw a really big kind of a crankbait on, but it's a good rod for throwing these smaller crankbaits like this Pro Little John. And at $120 reel, I'm just kind of, honestly, I'm kind of blown away by how much this stuff costs. And that's one of the uh, things I really like about 13s. They've got some really quality stuff at a cheaper price. But if you want to check this stuff out, there's a link down below. You can go to shopcarls.com and they have this stuff. They have both of these in stock all the time. So click the link down below. You can go check out these rods. They're pretty dang cheap. But they're pretty dang good. There's one. There's one. You can't really fight much either. Right at the boat. Ooh. Little spotted bass. Chartreuse little John. This one's actually called Sunny Brim, I believe. Little 12 inch spotted bass. All right, we're out here. It's cold in January. It's about 28 degrees at daylight this morning, maybe 30. We didn't get here at daylight, though. We got here. After let it warm up for a little while, it's going to get up to 60 today, though, so it's going to end up being a pretty nice day. Out here on a small little local lake, and like I said in every other video, it's drawn down. So kind of going to concentrate those fish, kind of going to put them in a little bit more textbook areas. You're really going to be able to pick up on kind of where they're sitting whenever you do catch one. It's going to be a lot easier to kind of gather information for the pattern because there's just less kind of reason for them to get somewhere whenever they get somewhere you can actually see why they're there so try to catch this one just call a little spotted bass we'll keep kind of pecking around poking around flip a jig around throw a little john around and try to catch one this lake has a lot of really really big fish in it i mean real big ones like big big ones so try to catch one two of those a day and they got to be hanging around somewhere because the water's staying the water's down they got to be that's a pretty decent places, so let's go find us one or two big ones. Dink! And it's a little bit cold, sometimes you're going to hit you a dock float or two. Just got to happen every now and then to remind you why, why you want to have the pinpoint accuracy. If you never miss, if you never hit nothing, you don't remember exactly why you need to cast. You know, you need a cast wheel because that's what happens when you don't. Sometimes you need that reminder, you know. You need that motivation. This is a 
kind of a unique lake they'll get it's so weird here sometimes man they'll be in three inches of water and i'm talking about six pounders big and good ones super shallow and then sometimes it's like they're all out in like eight and then sometimes it'll just be weird and they'll just all be down super deep just weird on this lake man this is one of them lakes that uh i've never really really cracked but i've caught some really big bags here because there's so many big ones here and i cover a ton of water so but a super fun lake to fish any cast could be a seven eight pounder juice this is the juice see I was just saying, oh, there's like five more with it. Did you lose it? Yeah, I lost it. I caught a leaf. <laughs> there's like a bunch with it. I lost him, didn't have him good. I wonder what was the deal with that. I caught, it, I caught everything around here. So what happened with that fish is, even though it was a small little spotted bass, it was like a 13 incher probably, but I twisted him a lot. Like I twisted the fish around in circles. Not what you wanna do with treble hooks. You don't wanna twist the fish around because you'll actually spin those hooks out. A lot of times those treble hooks just get a little, like just get under the first layer of skin, kind of skin hook them a lot. And whenever you twist those fish a lot, You'll actually kind of twist those hooks out of the fish's mouth and give them a little bit of leverage so they can throw it. And that's exactly what happened. I twisted that fish around in a circle and he came right off. Can't do that. But I wasn't really on my game because it was a 13 inch spotted bass. So I'm not too broken hearted over it. Trust me. I'm not going to cry about that one. If it was a seven or eight pounder. Might have cried a little bit. You got one caught? Yep. Feels like a pretty good one too. He's coming he up must right be here. deep. He's not coming up. I got him hooked funny. I believe he's going kind of in a circle. Yep. Got him hooked outside the mouth. It's a spotted bass. Oh. I knew he was felt real heavy. Felt like a dang big one. Just a little spotted bass. Ring crawl, rock crawler. Not rock crawler, little John got me one. This one's a small one, I can tell by his head shape. A small spotted bass. Would have a dang little bit already, little spot. That little sucker. In that muddy water, they sure do get white. They get white bass. White bass back in a creek. He got it good too. I'm gonna grab him. Get off your head first, buddy. Beautiful. Don't catch those too often, which I don't fish for them. I typically don't even fish in places where a lot of them are, but that was actually kind of a weird one. He was on a flat bank, muddy water. Eat him a little crankbait. Teeny tiny. But it is a bass. I feel like I was going to get a bite right there, but I didn't think he was going to be this size. Whenever I was thinking in my head, there ought to be a seven there. I meant pounds, not inches. First little large mouth of the day. Get it pretty good too. Pretty little sucker. Chunk. You already call it more than that one.
pretty little spotted bass. That's all we've caught so far today is mostly spots and one large mouth, but at least we're getting a dang bite or two. Super stained water, not super stained, it's kind of clearing up a little bit now, but pretty stained water. I like, I like fishing in these conditions, I can tell you that. We've probably caught 10 or so. All small, all small. Thank you. There one. There we go. That's about all we've been catching. Y'all have a good day. Bye. No problem. Maybe we'll see you on the water. Yeah. The conditions that we are faced with today, pretty self-explanatory. Check out the water. Stained up. 55 degree water temp, 54, 55. Chartreuse little John. Just covering water. Trying to dial in exactly where these females are. It's mid-January now. And we are... Kind of poking around, pecking around, trying to see where they'd be. I did pull up to uh, kind of a more traditional wintertime place. Just a big channel swing bluff bank. It's just a place where they're obviously going to be all times of the year, but in the winter, it's just one of the most productive places. And with it being a little bit more stained up water, I'm in the area of the lake right now that's typically pretty dang clear. So with it being a little bit more stained up, I just went ahead and put on a chartreuse square bill. Little John's not actually exactly a square bill, but it's close enough. And uh, covering the water, I have a couple hunches of where I think some of these big females might be. And we're going to pull up and try to catch us one or two. This time of year is really special. If you find somewhere where those big fish are not traditionally supposed to be, you can catch some giant bags in some of these tournaments around here. You just have to figure out exactly where they are and catch them out of places where they're not traditionally caught. That's the recipe for catch them pretty dang good this time of year there's some really really big fish caught this time of year and some really really big bags caught this time of year so see if we can't put ourselves together one of them there's one little large head and catching mostly spots today so Large mouth is a welcome sight. Just not that size. Pretty. He's eating no keep on this lake. Little spot. A little bit better one though, ain't it? Get in there, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Getting on in there. Unfortunately, that's like, well, that large mouth was bigger than him, but it's the biggest spot of the day. Going back. All right, now we're back on track for like the good old days, back when I very first started YouTube. You know, I used to seem like I was always talking to y'all when I was sitting in the truck, waiting for blast off, you know, sitting in the, in the line to launch, whatever it was. I just always seemed to be sitting in the truck, making intros and outros and stuff like that. So, so we're bringing that back today, but I uh, had a good time today fishing in the new Cayman CX-20. I will do a top speed video very soon on that boat. Uh, we got to get it all the way broke in first, and then I'll be able to really lean on it and see exactly what she's got in her. She feels like it's going to be a pretty fast boat, though, and we do get it all dialed in. But we had a good time today. Caught a lot of spotted bass. You know, that's kind of one of the things with fishing in the area that I live is you can catch a bunch of fish, have a bunch of spotted bass, and just not catch any big ones. So today we got quite a few bites. Just never got one of those big bites, but still had a really good time in january in a highly pressured part of the country if you can get that many bites you got a pretty good day so very blessed with today had a good time got to catch us a few and that's it good video i appreciate it guys appreciate y'all watching if you like it give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below how fast do you think 
my Cayman CX20 is going to go. So we'll see who's the closest.